If it rolls, the Tomsberg can carry it. From the smartest sports cars, anywhere from 400,000 to 1.4 million, to the biggest things that move. Excavators, bulldozers, trucks, whatever. A constant battle. We are fighting for every square meter. Against the clock. It's a puzzle. It's a game of Tetris. And the forces of nature. The wind is not the biggest problem, it's the sea. On the biggest roll-on, roll-off ship in the world. 65 tons moving from one side to another. That will be equal to disaster. Tonsberg is the largest roll-on, roll-off vessel ever constructed. A 17-story warehouse on the waves. We can load anything. From massive excavators the target cat next. to farm equipment <laughs> and exotic sports cars. We can take everything on wheels. And if it's not on wheels, we just put it on wheels and load it. If it can be rolled on this ship and rolled off, this Roro vessel can transport it. Weighing 76,500 gross tons, Tonsberg measures 265 meters long and 32 meters wide. But what makes Tonsberg special? is what lies beneath. Nine cargo decks with a combined area equal to seven soccer fields and three decks whose height can be adjusted to fit even the most awkward cargo. Planes and helicopters, big yachts. Captain Stein Eric Flo has been at sea since he was 17. After 42 years, uh, it's a lifetime. And this is the ship of a lifetime. The Mitsubishi Mark V Roro. I've tried them all. Mark I, Mark II, III, IV, and this is number five. This is the best one. Since her launch in Japan five years ago, Tomsberg has been in constant motion, circling the globe on a delivery route that never ends. The first port on the next leg of her world tour is Bremerhaven in northern Germany. After loading up here, Tonsberg will visit Zeebrugge and then Southampton to roll more cargo on and off the ship. Then she will sail more than 6,000 kilometers west across the Atlantic to the busiest row row port in the United States, Baltimore. If all goes well, she'll make it through all four ports in 15 days before heading on to her next leg in the South Pacific. It's 5.30 a.m. as her giant loading ramp begins its 20-minute descent. Cargo Superintendent Volker Fries and his platoon of stevedores can't start loading soon enough. Once the ramp is open, the clock starts ticking. Volker has less than nine hours today and only six hours tomorrow to fill up the giant ship. Volker works for a logistics company based here in Bremerhaven. Volker's job is to load every piece of cargo quickly and to keep it organized. It's a complex operation over nine decks. It's, it's like a puzzle. You have to bring the pieces together. There's a load plan on paper, but Volker has most of it in his head. They come up, they oh. turn here, and then they bring it down. Tomsberg is supposed to sail at 1 p.m. tomorrow. One o'clock. That's our target. Eight hundred and fifty German cars are heading for the US market. 
They're going to the upper decks. We are going to load BMW Mercedes Benz for Baltimore. Tunsberg will carry more than 3,000 cars on this voyage. But it's a summer weekend in Germany. Volker doesn't have enough drivers to load all the cars in one day. So we have to reduce our operation. And the cargo is ready, but this time it's a labor issue. As the cars roll in, Tonsberg's decks adapt to them. Deck 8 is adjusted to the exact height necessary for sedans. The space between decks 6 and 7 is slightly taller to accommodate light trucks and SUVs. Each upper deck is a custom-made car park. Rule number one, no wasted space. Especially here in the high deck where you have 6 meter and 40, we are fighting for every square meter and we try to make the best out of it. Vehicles are parked close together, 30 centimeters between bumpers, 10 centimeters between mirrors. So close, the doors can't be opened except for the vehicle at the end of the row. Up on deck seven, these right-handed cars are headed for Australia and New Zealand. Drivers follow strict rules to keep the cars from getting scratched. Soft clothing, no zippers, no jewelry. Always white with gloves to drive the car. Then the drivers are taxied back to drive many more cars aboard. Tonsberg also carries lots of cargo without wheels. These items are loaded onto trailers and driven aboard by heavy-duty tractors designed just for roll-on, roll-off ships. The driver's seat and steering wheel pivot inside the cab, so the driver is behind the load, like a forklift. It makes it easier to squeeze cargo into tight spaces. The single largest item on Tonsberg's manifest is this giant steel lattice construction crane. It takes 15 trailers to carry its pieces into the hold. The base alone weighs 48 tons. I would say peanuts for this type of boat. The main target is heavy cargo, awkward cargo. Locomotives, 120 tons. Generators, turbines, up to 200, 250 tons. Dedicated cargo for this type of vessel. Bremerhaven is one of the busiest ports in the North Sea. Demand and costs for berths are high. If Tonsberg falls behind, the delay will cascade into the ships lined up behind her. Since we have the next vessels waiting outside at Anchorage, we have to ensure that our vessel will sail in the right timing. Everything is like a domino. That's the reason why we have to keep the sailing time for tomorrow, one o'clock. It's day two at Bremerhaven. Captain Stein Eric Flo is anxious about the schedule. He checks in with Chief Officer Serdan Katunarich. When are we sailing? Have you heard anything? I'm a bit worried. Volker is used to dealing with captains and their worries. Okay, I'd like to check uh, what time uh, we sail. 1300. Okay, 1300. The cars keep coming. Four hundred ninety-nine loaded and three hundred fifty-one to go. With less than five hours until sailing, Tonsberg still has three hundred and fifty cars left to load. And then there's the heavy stuff. Excavators, bulldozers. Volker has to make it all fit. All time. By 10 to 12, the last piece is in place. 
that's it for today. Ten minutes earlier than expected. Volker and Tonsberg were made for each other. German efficiency meets Japanese and Norwegian design. He's fast, he's fast, yeah. Deutsche Grundigkeit, huh? <laughs> At last, the ship is ready to move. And I will start to close the eastern door. It takes 20 minutes for the watertight inner door to close and the ramp to lift back into position. Our bridge, ramp up and secured. All right, very good. In a few seconds, we will uh, let go all lines and start backing out. Stir line going, thank you. Turn slower. It can be a tricky maneuver if it's windy in here and it's narrow. Starboard then. That's one of the reasons why we uh, booked two tugs to help us. Hard starboard. Bremerhaven was smooth sailing. But before Tonsberg's Atlantic voyage, two more ports remain. Next stop, sir, we get tomorrow morning. And Zeebrugge is one of Europe's busiest row row ports. The world's largest roll on, roll off cargo vessel, Tonsberg, is underway. Loaded with cars, excavators, yachts, and even a giant crane. We are increasing the speed, it's about 70 knots. Okay, starboard 10. Starboard 10, 092, passing 130. She's headed for Zeebrugge, Belgium, the latest stop on a never ending round the world tour. Zeebrugge handles more than 43 million tons of cargo a year. Here, traffic is always an issue. Twenty-eight kilometers from Zeebrugge. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Thank Welcome you. aboard. Sea pilot Eric de Cleric comes aboard to guide Tonsberg into port and immediately has his hands full. Van Damesles, Van Damesles, de Tonsberg. Tonsberg is just behind a giant ship carrying liquefied natural gas, a cargo that is highly explosive. We are trying to get ahead of him. If we cannot beat him, we will have to wait at least one hour. Once in port, an LNG carrier gets everyone's attention. No other ship can move until the LNG is docked. The problem when you have an LNG carrier is that all other traffic have to wait for safety reasons. But sea pilot de Cleric asks the LNG to reduce speed so Tonsberg can move into port first. He will slow down and I can still go ahead of her. We can reduce Captain to about 10 knots then. 10 knots. Starboard 5. Starboard 5. Let's slow ahead, please. Let's slow ahead. In close quarters, there are constant adjustments. Tonsberg will crush anything in her path. Even if you go at slow speed, it goes still too fast. Because at certain moments, these ships, they are so heavy, so you cannot stop at them within one, 200 meters. 154. 154. Five knots. Two tugboats help guide the ship into the lock system that leads into Zeebrugge's inner harbor. Port five. Port five. Port five. Now entering the lock. Entering the lock, thank you. Bridge holding. Keep it tight, fore and aft. As the giant ramp opens, Chief Officer Serdan Katunarich checks his cargo list. We have uh, 786 car to load, and we have 62 to discharge. 
Serdan has to match lists with this man, Jan de Ahera. He's cargo superintendent at Zeebrugge. Yo, Franky, sorry, come wrong view. Jan's plan is his Bible. As you can see here now, we're loading these flatbeds. These two will be loaded here, and some of them will be loaded here. Jan's laser ensures the load will fit past cargo already in place. These lower decks are for the largest, heaviest items. This is a very high deck. This is much more expensive than a car deck. So you want to put as, as much as possible in one small space. While Jan loads the cargo, the fuel transfer barge moves into position for the procedure called bunkering. Tonsberg needs a full tank for her nine-day, 6,000-kilometer Atlantic crossing. She burns 50 tons of bunker fuel per day. But there's a problem with the fuel pipe adapter. Unbelievably, the refueling barge didn't bring the correct adapter for Tonsberg's bunkering pipe. The hose connection is a different size from the connection to bring in the fuel. Refueling takes at least 14 hours, so it's too late to go back for it. Meanwhile, way down on deck one, Jan is dealing with heavy issues of his own. These steel plates are headed for Australia. Each weighs several tons. Add them all up and they weigh more than 500 tons. Heavy cargo like this is placed in Tonsberg's lowest deck. It's logical. Always, if, if you go and carry your baggage, you will put the, the high, heaviest stuff on the bottom and the light stuff on the top to avoid damage. If these steel plates slide around, they will destroy everything in their path. The Zeebrugge dock workers put their backs into securing the steel. On deck three, some items are missing. There's a big hole where two tractors should be. But during the night time, 28 arrived, so we are still waiting for two units. Jan has saved a place for the two missing tractors, but if they don't arrive, they'll have to wait until the next boat. If you don't have long enough... At the bunker need... station on deck five, chief engineer Stein Gravdahl needs a safe hack for a fuel fix. The refueler didn't bring the correct hose adapter for Tonsberg's bunker pipe. How much different? Can we get four bolts in? And we can use clamps. Engineer cadet Robert Patrick is learning on the job. So what we're doing is we're just going to connect it with four bolts as best as we can and then clamp it. Robert is one month into a four-month internship on the Tonsberg. Out here is either live or die, especially if you're out doing an Atlantic voyage and something breaks, it's up to you to try and fix it, find a solution, make it. That's why we have so many experienced people up on board here. Using a combination of clamps and gaskets, Stein and his engineering team fashion a link that will hold. It's safe and it won't leak. After two hours, the fuel is flowing. It takes 14 hours and costs $850,000 to pour 3,000 tons of fuel into Tonsberg's tanks. Day five, most of Jan's loading is complete. If you have different units who are, need to be loaded, like tractors, crushers, vans, then it's a puzzle. And it's like you say, it's, it's a game of Tetris. The last of Jan's missing tractors have shown up. All ends well. They made it in time. Jan's finished with Tonsberg. Until the next time.
It's now day six aboard the world's largest roll-on, roll-off carrier. She sailed across the English Channel overnight with Southampton now in her sights. Southampton is one of history's great ports. In 1912, the Titanic left here for America. We are docking at the Titanic boat. It's quite right, sir. We are. Harbour pilot Rory Jackson has come aboard to guide the ship. Midships the wheel. Midships. It's trickier than it appears. The harbour is quite wide, but much of it is shallow. For a ship the size of the Tonsberg to enter safely, the pilot must follow a zigzag pattern along a trench that is 12.6 metres deep. Shallow water there. Shallow water over there. So, uh, like I say, we have to turn in a, in a, in a specific position, really. Starboard 20. Starboard 20. And it gets more complicated as they move deeper into port. You on the port side, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Just going to slow the turn. Because down. Southampton sits within an estuary where three rivers flow into the English Channel, there is only one and a half metres of clearance between the Tonsberg and the Channel Bottom. Two Southampton tugboats will guide the Tonsberg into the harbour. Or stop engine, sir. Please. Stop the engine, that's good. Um, straight into 44 berth. Yeah, it's copy for uh, Eston after. Midships the wheel. Midships. Midships the wheel. Thank you, Eston. Uh, back to a tight line. Eston down to tight line, Roger. Harder starboard. Harder Hard starboard. starboard. We got two meters. Good shape. Tuck all stop, Captain. Thank you, sir. Any good? <laughs> two lines down there. We'll be fine. Bridge, where we go one meter ahead. Keeping the spring line up. Let go, sir. All lines are short. All right, we'll break now. We have arrived. We've arrived. The loading and unloading of the Tonsberg isn't limited to cargo. Chief Officer Serdan Katunovic is leaving the ship at Southampton for a holiday. Josip Josipovic has come aboard to replace him. So loading started now. Okay, thank you. We are expecting harvester, tractors, and so on. A lot of rural cargo. Okay. While in port, the ship's hull will be scrubbed of sea sludge. Over months at sea, the build-up increases Tonsberg's drag. It's like swimming with your clothes on. Not good for smooth sailing, and that costs money. So it's very important to, to get it off the hull before we start the next voyage. A Norwegian company designed this remotely operated vehicle, or ROV. It clings to the hull and slowly scrubs its way around the ship. It's the first of its kind. Klaus Osterwald is the team leader. We're going to save them time and fuel on their travel across the Atlantic. Cleaning the entire hull costs $15,000. Frederick Vasnes operates the machine remotely. Thrusters push the ROV against the side of the ship. High-pressure water jets scour the hull below the waterline. A giant vacuum collects the debris as it's removed from the hull. We take it up to shore, filtrate it, and then deliver it to waste. It's a new system that reduces the spread of invasive species. 
traditional cleaning has been banned because the scrapings were left in the harbour water, introducing foreign pests such as zebra mussels and Asian kelp. A ship's hull may carry over 600,000 organisms. If you clean without collecting it, then you just ship it from one end of the world to another and then you just dump it in another port. It's not good at all. It's a thin layer of slime, but it adds up over Tonsberg's 265-meter-long hull. We've been experiencing up to 20, 25 millimeters. This sea gunk could cover over half a playing field. Now we've got 12 hours, so we have to get going. And the loading has to get going too. Chief Officer Josip and Southampton Cargo Superintendent Teresa Back are facing a tall order. This 65-ton stone crusher is 3.3 meters high. The ramp leading to the lower deck is 3.4 meters high. But the stone crusher still doesn't fit. It's too high to go down. Teresa needs to park it, and she's got to find a place before cargo starts jamming up behind it. Can you leave it on starboard side? So he's gonna put it as close as possible and then push it in because I want it as tight as possible. Teresa grabs a space on the main deck. Meanwhile, the ROV moves across Tonsberg's hull like a mower on a giant lawn. Yeah, it's been about 100 kilo so far today. Once filtered out of the seawater, the hull scrapings are collected into these bags. We're expecting to collect six, eight bags of this today. But something isn't right. The hose is stuck. Uh, it's getting dragged downward. There's a low-tech solution. A long stick can reach down and poke the hose free. Because there's a lot of mud in this uh, port on the bottom, and uh, if, if the hose uh, sinks down to, down to the bottom, it will get stuck. After close to an hour of poking, the ROV is back in action, but behind schedule. We lost uh, approximately 45 minutes. Clean hull or not, the Tonsberg must sail at high tide. As night falls, cargo superintendent Robbie Abrahams takes over the task of making the pieces fit. The puzzle pieces include these Aston Martins and McLarens, some of the most expensive cars in the world. Deck six is loaded. We have a little bit to do on deck five, the remainder of deck four, and a small pocket on deck three. Have we got the allocated minis on yet at all? Every available space will be taken right up to the big ramp. We fill up right to the door. Fill up every inch and every nook and cranny. Fill to the door. The loading is finished. But Klaus's ROV is still hard at work. The stress is on. Uh, now we have to be very focused, uh, and it's already been a very long day. Klaus is out of time. Captain Flo calls a halt to the scrubbing operation. They have scrubbed all but a one-meter area on the starboard side. No, not the entire hull, but uh, almost, almost. At least the hull is cleaner than it was. Now the ship's got to go. We came quite close. We just had a meter left, but uh, we have to give it up for this time and uh, take the rest when she returns to Southampton. The Southampton Harbour pilot is on the bridge. The tug's just coming round there now, so... Port quarter, you want them, or...? Centre lead, port quarter, whatever's okay. easiest. OK, port quarter. OK, Captain, we can slowly start thrusting to starboard. Tunsberg's European tour is complete. Next stop, Baltimore. 
But first, she faces the Atlantic. And September is high season for tropical storms. On this 6,000-kilometer journey, routine maintenance is part of the daily routine. Under the watchful eye of Chief Engineer Stein Gravdahl, Cadets Stuart Morrison and Robert Patrick are cleaning the exhaust condensers. Even though it's not the most com uh, complicated job, it is very important. Because out, out at sea, everybody needs to do their part of the job. It's all about hands-on experience, including a mop. Ah, let's save ourselves loving it, Jim. When they're not on duty, Tonsberg's three cadets use their spare time to study. Because you thought of this really, really hard thing at college that made no sense. Out here, when you can see where you're heading, where you're going, what's happening, it actually makes far more sense, and then you start to enjoy it. Homesickness is a fact of life at sea, so the crew does all it can to keep their minds off it. It's not just individual activity. The gym is home to Tonsberg's basketball team, complete with uniforms and team photo. Three, two, one. I went and played once. You just can't keep up with them. They're so fast. There's uh, one guy in here that can stand right in the back of the hall, just shoot and get it almost every time. Meals also provide some downtime. Tonsberg's Filipino crew members are preparing a taste of home. My preference, steak and this beer, sausage, this is very good. There are different tastes, but the crew is united. You have two life, you have two families in a way. It's family away from home. It's day 10 of the voyage. Captain Flo is focused on the weather. All right. A small front forming yesterday. I guess the barometer is on the way up again, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, last time I checked, it's about 1,009. The wind is not the biggest problem. It's the sea. You crash right into it. Weather can turn quickly. I can see coming closer to the coast. There is also a system coming up. There are two storm systems ahead. One is likely to pass before Tonsberg and break up in the North Atlantic. Farther south, a bigger concern is a tropical storm brewing in the Caribbean Sea. If it gets bigger, it will be declared a hurricane. We'll just watch what Mother Nature planned to do and stay out of it. Ideally, Captain Flo can navigate around bad weather. But if he can't, Tomsburg could be in for a pitch battle with the sea. In the most extreme weather, the ship can fall into a trough between the waves, forcing her to roll side to side. Tomsburg's capacity to do so is remarkable. She can roll up to 50 degrees without capsizing. But no matter how strong the ship, such conditions take a hard toll on the crew. Chief Officer Josip has seen waves of nine meters. It was like 20 days I didn't see the sun. So it was like 30 to 40 degrees rolling all the time. So no eating, no, no normal life. No going to toilet, <laughs> nothing. So it was terrible. It was really terrible. Even normal weather conditions are a strain on the fasteners. Josip and his safety team check the lashings twice a day. OK, guys, we're going to split in two groups. Mosen and Junior will take port side, check the lashing, tight all the roll lash. Me and Robert will take the starboard side. This is 48,000 kilos, 48 tons. And this is like a 50 ton sling. This piece is a. 65 tons. So can you imagine the inertia of the 65 tons moving from one side to another? That will be equal to disaster. 
I prayed not to happen. Tomsberg's hull is solid steel, but it's only two and a half centimeters thick. One loose piece of cargo could pierce it and flood the ship. Day 13. Tonsberg is almost across the Atlantic Ocean. But a storm system moving up from the Caribbean could slow them down. And big waves could wreak havoc below deck. Chief Officer Josip's priority is to make sure the cargo is securely fastened. We put the lashing as much as we can. Our life depends on it. There are 3,500 vehicles aboard Tonsberg. Each one has fuel in the tank. Each one is a potential firebomb. When they start moving, it's uh, very easy to make a spark, and the spark goes uh, fire, and then you have fire on the vessel. And its uh, life is in jeopardy. The steel plates down in deck one are an even heavier threat if the ship starts rolling. Just one broken lashing could set the plates loose to thrash about the hold, with catastrophic consequences. Even in smooth sailing, there is some shifting of the contents. Josip's routine checks catch small problems before they become big ones. Parked 30 centimeters apart, these vehicles are nearly touching. Superficial damage is inevitable. Minor dents will be repaired at the company's Baltimore body shop. Tonsberg scars will have to wait a little longer. Afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. How are we doing today? Good, sir. Captain Flo gets bad news. The cargo to be picked up in Baltimore isn't there yet. After hurrying to keep a strict schedule, Tonsberg must now slow down. So, let's see how much speed we need. Every hour in port costs the company money. We need, well, what, 14 knots? 14 knots average. It's better to slow down and conserve fuel. We might have to reduce to maneuvering speed for another day. Yeah, Not be that too early save on sailing and save on time in port that was counts the good news tonsberg's reduction in speed means the storm front will pass ahead of the ship the coast is clear within hours tonsberg enters the territorial waters of the united states of america on approach to the mouth of chesapeake bay Hello there, pilot on board. <laughs> Hello, See you again. Again. Uh, Bound for Baltimore. It's going to take us nine to ten hours up the bay, so it's going to be a long night. For a ship's captain, no other jurisdiction is more sensitive. This part of the eastern seaboard is home to the cities of Norfolk, Baltimore, Richmond, and the capital, Washington, as well as 26 military bases belonging to the U.S. Navy, Marines. Air Force and Coast Guard. Every ship entering the bay is under intense scrutiny, inside and out. It's the crew's responsibility to ensure nothing illegal is on the ship, and that includes people. Chief Officer Yosef organizes teams to search the ship. Zone 1. This accommodation that will be catering officer. Anything suspicious, report immediately to me. With only 28 crew, everyone takes part. Third officer Giovanni, you will take the lower decks. So if you find any suspicious packages or anything, just don't touch it. Don't bring it in here. Just uh, inform me immediately. The search team scour every deck along the length of the ship. Engine room team, all, all is clear. Okay, thank you. That takes all clear. Deck one, two, three, all clear. Nothing so suspicious about. After two hours, no sign of trouble. By 3 a.m., Tonsberg is entering Baltimore Harbor. 
Security, security to Tongsburg, inbound at the Key Bridge. Tongsburg, inbound, standing by for any concern traffic. By 8 a.m., the ramp is down, and the first team of drivers is unloading the wheeled cargo. Well on their way to offloading more than 2,000 cars. At times, you have a tremendous number of drivers working here. You have up to 100 drivers working here today. Baltimore Cargo Superintendent John Street is the traffic cop. You look at a ship like a giant puzzle, and you look to see how you can best employ your gangs for the most efficiency. But some of the farm vehicles don't have enough fuel to get them off the boat. One stalled tractor could spell gridlock. So they had to send somebody up to get the fuel truck, to gas the equipment up so they don't run out while we're working the vessel. The McLarens get the kid glove treatment. These cars are worth a fortune. Anywhere from 400,000 to 1.4 million. As the wheels roll off the lower decks, that clears the way for the cars on the upper decks. The whole thing is timing, timing, timing. Almost all the Baltimore bound vehicles are ashore. John hopes to load 800 cars by the end of the shift. If he hits the deadline, he won't have to book a second shift of drivers. So you're looking $12,000. I can save if I can make it by, by 6 o'clock. Tonsberg's decks are wide open, but there are fewer cars than expected. Confirming cars 157. 157 is fine. It's uh, 14 cars less than the pre plan. That's accurate. Uh, of an expected 800 cars to load, only 157 make it to port before Tonsberg's deadline. That's our last one for Brisbane right there. All right, that works. The 643 missing cars will have to hitch a ride on the next ship. But there's a lot more to load than cars. By late evening, there's one last giant consignment before assistant cargo superintendent Tim Beale can send Tonsberg on her way. The Tiger Cat next. 10 4. All right, Brian, if you could go ahead and send the Tiger Cat up next, it'd be great. You know, yeah, we're ready. Yeah, the Tiger Cat's one of the bigger pieces that we load. We're going to bring it up, land it on the main deck, send the arm out, and set it down. Are you going to put him off to the side when he gets down the deck? The challenge isn't height, but length. On the down slope, the 10 meter boom arm could punch the deck floor below. It's a tight squeeze. coming down into the deck before you actually land the tracks. Very touch and go. The Tiger Cat just makes it. And Tonsberg will just make her deadline out of Baltimore. as Tonsberg raises her ramp. Junior third officer Mark Julia charts the course through the Bahamas and past Cuba. Mark is the youngest officer on board. At the end of the day, when you went back to your cabin and then you lie down thinking that I've finished a wash, I've been handling the largest Toro in the world, like it, it cost millions. Captain Flo Hello, comes to check on his work. Hello, How are we doing? After more than 40 years at sea, Captain Stein Eric Flo is retiring. His next voyage will be his last. I don't know where the years have gone, actually, because it seems like yesterday when I started on this old uh, 
cargo liner back. I signed on in San Francisco the first time in June 74. And since then, yeah, time had just flown away. Two sailors, one nearing the end of his career, one just beginning. I haven't been to Australia, and this will be my first time. So I'm looking forward to it. As for Tomsberg, she has a long, active life ahead of her. As long as wheels keep turning, this big ship will keep on rowing. <laughs>